From the Standing Stone Farm Studio right outside downtown Nashville, it's time for the most ridiculous sports podcast in the world. So sit back, relax, and listen as Bobby Butler and Brandon Bond crack open a cold one and talk all things hockey, pop culture, and complain about everyday situations. It's the Pox Out Podcast on the Penalty Box Radio Network. Welcome into another episode of the Pucks Out Podcast. I'm Bobby. He's Brandon. Hey, who? You can find us on the three majors of social media at Pucks Out Pod. Now let's crack open this cold beer and let's get after it. Let's do it. Oh, that was right in my face, man. <laughs> Minor. That's what she said. No, this beer just oh. popped right into my face, dude. Yeah, mine, mine did that uh, a little bit too. All over the computer screen and it. Hmm. This week we've got from Mayday Brewery, uh, Angry Redhead, Red oh. Ale. It's my first time having this one. I can't believe that, bro. This is such this a, a good beer. It's a popular and it's really good, man. I, and the cans, so dope. Yeah. Dude, we're going to post up a pic of it, man. These are sick cans. Yeah. They've changed it up, man. Yeah, I'm keeping one of these for sure. But um, how you been, buddy? Oh, dude, I've been doing good. Just, you know, working. Uh, did a little bit of yard work this weekend, uh, pulling some weeds and whatnot. So now my hands are all like, yeah, you know, like. I did some mulching blistery. this morning. You did some mulching this morning. Yeah. Oh, Farmer Bobby. I think yeah, that we got to. Speaking of Farmer you know what I, I didn't we gotta, do? Yeah. No, uh, I know. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, we talked about uh, a water bet of me being able to pull up, what, five gallons of cabbage that I planted myself. Five gallon buckets worth. Uh, I have already conceded that. Getting I think I, I, after doing some research, A, I shouldn't have gone with cabbage. No. Dumb pick. It was the worst that you could have picked. B, my wife was not happy that I just unilaterally decided I was going to become a farmer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, you, you're, uh, you already have a career. And so becoming a farmer was not high on Megan's bucket list. <laughs> yeah. The, the pure fact that you were going to have to spend thousands of dollars on overalls, that, yeah. r- that alone was like, all right, buddy. All right. Yeah. So we are going to definitely water bet, um, do this water bet soon and we'll get that, uh, get that posted for you guys. But, uh, yeah. We forgot to tell you last week, but Farmer Bobby is a failure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, man? You've been doing all right Very other good, than uh, not farming? <laughs> uh, man, doing some yard work. I, uh, Like I said earlier, mulched around some, some of the roses. Yeah. And uh, just been hanging out, dude, watching some hockey. Uh, yeah, the, dude, wife and I are, the wife and I are leaving this week to go on a uh, her birthday. Uh, we, we rented a cabin in East Tennessee, just getting away for a little bit for her birthday. You know, she's been so busy. She, you know, she works in the mortgage industry and rates are so low right now. And having to deal with you. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, you never know when you're going to come home and just be a farmer. You yeah. Know what I mean, yeah. So that's what she has to put up with. So good. Well, I'm glad that uh, you guys are going to go have fun. Mostly her. I don't really care about yeah. you. Uh, but Megan deserves to have a, have a good, good birthday weekend. So happy birthday, Megan. Um, but uh, yeah, so don't forget to check us out on What a Maneuver on Patreon and YouTube. And right now we are running a, and I think this is the first time you're hearing about it because you're not on Twitter. I'm, we're yeah, running just a now here. <laughs> we're running a giveaway on Twitter. Head over to Twitter page, like, retweet, and tell us uh, and tell us who you think is going to win the Stanley Cup, and you'll be entered into a drawing to win a fifty dollars gift card to NHL Shop. And if you get it right, if you if you uh, if you guess right on the winner of the Stanley Cup, you'll be entered in twice. So head on over to Twitter, do that. Uh, you know, looking forward to giving away some money, but yeah, yeah it's all, yeah. all in good fun. I was not aware, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool, man. I'm, uh, I'm excited. I'm probably, I would definitely lose it if I was on Twitter and tried to enter it, you know, <laughs> so I'm not, uh, but, not on there. So, all right, let's get in some news. Everything you need to know about what's happening on the ice. It's time for news from inside the boards. The NHL bracket challenge is officially opened. We are recording this on Monday this week, and the uh, first round of the playoffs start tomorrow. You wouldn't be able to get in if you're, <laughs> I mean, you're hearing this for the first time. You know, yeah. you're not going to be able to get in. What is the NHL given this year? Uh, what, if you, what, 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 the, I, what am I going to win? I believe if you have a 100% full bracket, you get a million dollars. Oh, man. I don't even know what I'm going to do with my mill, dude. I'm going to have to put, put the money in the, the NHL shop gift yeah. card that we're going to have to give out that <laughs> maybe hey if i get him if i win this million dollars i'll tell you what bobby i'm buying all the materials for you to have to farm because <laughs> if money's the big object here i want to actually see you go through and fail <laughs> so 
That's well, what wasn't, I'm gonna money do. wasn't the biggest issue. It was the time. It was we are already in the middle of renovation. Sorry, bro. <laughs> nope. I'm I'm I'll pay for the renovation. No, oh, I don't. No, I'm not. I, yeah. What if I accidentally win and now I'm, now I'm on the hook for renovations and, and you to farm? <laughs> I don't know, man. It so, might Bobby, how do you pay be, for this? Well, my buddy won a contest. And, uh, <laughs> it might be worth my money, though, honestly, just to watch you farm every day, dude, because I would like I would like like a video blog. I would see you as my my personal farmer that I get to get entertainment through like a Zoom meeting every day. What'd you do with your million, Bob? Probably do the renovation. <laughs> uh, uh, well, at least that's what my wife would want to hear. Uh, but yeah, lots of overalls. Lots uh, of overalls. Yeah. Obviously, obviously, you, you got to have the. That, that's probably why you really didn't do the farming challenges because the lack of overalls already. Yeah. You know, you weren't in the right mindset. Yeah. But like we've said a couple of weeks ago, if What a Maneuver can get some Pucks Out podcast overalls, then we're in it overalls coveralls yeah i mean there's lots of things that i think should be on there that are not so yeah but uh we do have some masks though we might have if uh we get enough people to want some of those we might nice. uh, start telling yeah them, like, i know you know, i, lo- I love mine dude. yeah i love mine but all right so back to the news uh so uh if you've already entered in the bracket challenge let us know how yours is going uh no positive test results among the seven about the 7200 tests administered during the second week of phase four dude the Go nhl has freaking killed dude, the bubble dude yeah. nba is doing really well too though you know yeah. baseball not so much but, i mean they're not bubbled so that yeah. that would be uh a, that would be a why their bubble's not working their pro- yeah they're they got a terrible bubble <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah man i'm i'm very much impressed by this uh yeah they've done a we, really, we talk, we really good job we said last week that as as much shit as we give Gary Bettman, rightfully so. You know, it's tradition. He has, has his tradition. The, uh, the NHL has, has really killed it. And props to them. We were both pretty big proponents of not having the playoffs because we, th- we thought the risk was too high. Yeah. But honestly, they and the risk is still there. But man, they're well, showing that's how it's done. And, and you know what the crazy thing is? You know, a lot of people are say, oh, NHL is so much harder than every other sport. NHL is the best sport. And, you know, it might be. But. I'll tell you what, I don't think NFL players, NBA players, I mean, I guess NBA players are doing it. They're doing really um, well, except for Lou Williams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it seems that, you know, they are, you know, they're dealing with life in the bubble. And they're, may- I mean, they ha- the NHL spent the money and the time and the resources to put these guys in a position where they're comfortable. We, they're, I mean, the fact that they're all, <laughs> I think it's great that they're all staying in the same hotel. I think that helps. They're having like ping pong championships between teams. Yeah. I mean, we often look like idiots, but usually we're the cause of ourselves looking like idiots. And this time, Gary Bettman's made us look like the idiot. Yeah. And I couldn't be happier about about this time yeah. about being the idiot yeah. in the situation. And because of that, I think I'm going to hold off on him next time he's at uh, Bridgestone. I, I'll, I will I'll, not. I'll wait like 10 seconds before I start booing. That's, I mean, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, give him 10 Gary seconds, Bettman, then right back to booing. Gary Bettman, we are going to give you... I'll tell you what. How about instead of booing, we hiss. hiss. <laughs> you know, we'll hiss at him, dude. Just give him some you know, fang fingers. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't. I don't subscribe to the fang fingers. Yeah. I think it's dumb. We'll we're we're a large. Yeah, we're a large saber tooth tiger, and they would never just, fin- you know, claw fingers at you. It's claw arms, dude. Yeah. You know, like I just, I, I'm, you know, I'm trying to get that going. It's very unsuccessful. Yeah, but we've and I've helped. We we try. Yeah. We occasionally get some uh, some drunk people next to us who might, you know, do it for the first time, then forget. Usually, usually we'll get a couple laughs out of it. Yeah, and some sometimes we'll get. Uh, People are very upset that <laughs> yeah. through this joke process. Like I'm like, dude, finger, this doesn't make sense. But yeah, I'm not. So, you know, we'll hiss him or, yeah. or claw arms him. Yeah. And you said before, still calling it phases. Should yeah. I mean, it's the yeah. playoffs. We're, yeah. we're past second, the phases. Second week of phase four. You mean games? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like what a what a silly way of, of putting that. You know, gonna, like it'll be 10 years from now. We're in pay, We're in phase 300 now of. Uh, right. right. <laughs> They're, uh, you know, our kids are going to be like, what is why do they keep calling this phase? Yeah. They, yeah. Well, you don't remember the coronavirus days. Yeah. Uh, little lad, you know, <laughs> uh, but uh, but in our day, they they called it phases. And so. <laughs> Oh, Apparently mean, they just yeah. kept going. With like, it. Oh, you mean back when people could actually be next to each other? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> back when people could go to sports. <laughs> right, exactly. Now you now all stadiums are just drive in drive in stadiums, like a drive in yeah. theater. You just drive your car up and you know hook your hook yourself up to the radio. Yeah. DUIs are going to skyrocket. They're going to be or or Uber drivers are going to be making a yeah. mint a mint, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but. 
All right, let's get out of here. Let's go to the outside. Now that you know what's happening inside the boards, time for the rest of the headlines with news from outside the boards. Boo. I'm just going to boo before you even start reading, dude. Fall sports, uh, specifically the NCAA, uh, may be canceled. Uh, I I have here to look up sources uh, because at the time I was uh, some Twitter stuff, but I'm not going to do that. But take my word for it. <laughs> uh, but no, we'll uh, we'll look up something in a little bit. But yeah, so I do have some quotes here that uh, some sources got from some uh, quote unquote powerful uh, power five athletic directors. The first one is it's not fair what we're doing to our coaches and student athletes. Uh, the sooner we can come to f- finality, the better. Another one says, I think it's an ed- inevitable that the season will not be played in the fall. Um, neither athletic dire- director wished to be identified due to s- uh, sensitivity of the situation. Speak for yourself, everybody, but the, in, uh, but the sec, <laughs> I haven't heard anything or said or had anything said about the sec. Oh. Cause again, rioting will take over the South. I Not mean, to mention, they know that if they're the last ones to drop out, then they're like, well, we can go win the natty. Yeah, I mean, you get a 100% SEC national championship. Well, it it seems like many sources have already said that uh, the NCAA may not have any bowl games this year. Like they like you'll like you'll have conference play and conference championships. You think the SEC, if they're the only league playing, they're not just going to set up their own. I mean, Alabama, they may not even make it to this pseudo national championship, but they're going to claim one (laughs) for sure. Uh, yeah, man. I, you know, well, we won know. the Central Alabama uh, national I'm, uh, championship. I'm just so, you know, I just don't even. I know I'm supposed to talk about this kind of stuff because you know we've established that we are a sports podcast. But dude, I don't even want to talk about. It. I'm so sad. Yeah, but we will. <laughs> I'm so sad. <laughs> I'm so sad. And man. um, you know, we have a lot of players. Trevor Lawrence, in particular, has become uh, has come on the forefront of saying like we they want to play. Yeah. And that's great. And like I've said, cool, man. Yeah, dude, we get, we get are, like we get it. You want to play. We, we want to, to there's a lot of things we want to do. These are 18 to 22 year olds, bro. Like they're they want to play. I yeah. mean, you know, this is uh I mean, this is something that sometimes you gotta gotta take it out of yeah. the hands of and the like, people. We get that it. Make, you want to go pro, and this is your well, it's pathway like, you know, to go pro. I when mean, a, when one of these kids get injured and they want to go out there, you know, if a doctor says like this is gonna hurt you long term. You just have to not let that kid go play football. So, yeah. I mean, this might be a, a similar situation. And here's the thing, because it, and it, it would be understandable uh, if the NCAA or even one major school came out and said, OK, how about this as an idea for a bubble? Well, the problem is we haven't seen any of that because it is unreasonable to expect college athletes to be in a bubble. Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, if they're in a bubble, then that means are they going to classes? Yeah. Are they going to, you know, so, I mean, there's there's because so many not, more questions. Not every school has gone virtual. Not And so the moment that happens, that means every team that they play, if, if all it takes is one team not to be in a bubble, I mean, we've seen what happened in the MLB. I mean, all it takes is one team and then, you know, what no. happens when you have to cancel? This is not like baseball or hockey where you have multiple games in a week. Let me hit you with this, though. We bring back the NCAA football game and players have to play or lock and they have to play each other via Twitch, dude. I'm all for it. You're in? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to I'm going to throw that out there, you know, because we often have large athletic directors and NCAA representatives that listen to us. So, you know, just throwing it out there. Well, I've got lunch tomorrow with uh, Fulmer, so I'll let him know. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Fulmer, Fulmer's got a, he's got a, a lot of influence in that sphere. So I'm not a big college guy. That's really the only AD I, I can name off the top of my right, head. right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty big name. He's yeah. a national championship winning coach. And, you know, I mean, we're here in Tennessee. So everybody, you know, everybody that's generally listening, uh, except for our bro in Australia, dude, my boy, Keith, <laughs> they'll know who he is. So that was a good call. I mean that was yeah. a that was a that was a smart smart choice by you. All right, so uh, we're going to move into our main discussion for the day. Whew, we uh, we predicted some round robin in the qualifiers, and we did not do well, as I assume most not people great, did Bob. not. Not great, yeah. Bob. So we'll start in the West with. Uh, I do want to say before we get into the round robin, uh, we've uh, we've had some excitement from uh, a few folks that have been talking to me about our about our Seattle battle on twitch 
Yeah. Like they're super excited about it and not only wanting us to play the one simmed game, but have it legit like a five game series that we that we stream. I'm and not against it. I am not. I can't either. speak for the wife, but I'm not against it. I, I mean, you know, you didn't buy all those overalls and all <laughs> and, you know, build those boxes to grow your cabbage. So, I mean, you've saved thousands of dollars. Yeah. So, but I mean, you know, and maybe we'll do it like a similar situation and we'll do like. We'll do like a coin flip maybe for home ice and we'll switch up where we watch it. We watch it here. We watch it there. And, you know, that way it's like a home game yeah. for one of us. <laughs> yeah. So I'm definitely changing, though, after game one, <laughs> just so you know. OK, let's get back into the the actual discussion. But I did want to throw out that I'm very excited. How about for this? this? How, since I won the poll, I get home home ice advantage. I feel like that's fair. You get to change when you're on home ice. You get you get the you get last change on home ice, which means you can put dry sidle in on home ice. Ah, no, no, because I get to because you know you get home ice. It means I got to go to your place more times than you have to come to mine. I feel that if we're gonna do it like a legit seven game series, that you should get to change your roster after each round. Oh. Now let's turn injuries on though, and if a guy gets injured, he's out. Fair. Sure. Yeah. All right. So there we go. All right. So let's uh, <laughs> let's start in the West with number eight Calgary, uh, who won three games to one over number nine Winnipeg. You guessed that right. You had them winning in three though, so that is two points to you. And I th- and I can tell you right now, I think I think you beat me by like two points in total do in this. But you we have both a, had very low. You value. already have it scored out somewhere. No, should I'm, we t- be I'm, it yeah, right I'm, here? I'm, okay. I'm looking at it right now. Okay. I had the Jets in five. Uh, that did not go as planned. Hmm. Number yeah. five, Edmonton versus number 12, Chicago. Chicago won three to one. We both had the Oilers. I had Oilers in four. You had Oilers in five. I think mine was more of a hope than it was, a, you know, a real choice. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that was no yeah. points there. Um, so basically, yeah. we're sitting at, at two to nothing. Yeah. And after right we go now. through this, we'll kind of discuss each matchup a little bit. Uh, number seven, Vancouver versus number 10, Minnesota. Van- uh, the Canucks won uh, three games to one. I got two points for that. Didn't look didn't look strong for you um, initially because uh, yeah. Minnesota played really well yeah. that early game. And here's the thing: even I I watched that game. I still had hope in Vancouver. Like when I when that Vancouver game was over, looks really good, dude. Honestly. I mean, and I I mean, it's just hard to bet against Quinn Hughes. To be honest, dude, he's well, so, Quinn Hughes and Pedersen and and Besser like and, the I mean, Wild. They just like if they're like and here's the thing: if there is truly one team who deserves, who should have Lafiniere. It's the wild. They're the only team that quote unquote made the playoffs that got eliminated that I could see. Okay. Like if Edmonton or Chicago or Pittsburgh got them, people are going to be mad. Nobody's yeah, going to be maybe upset the Rangers. It. I would say maybe the Rangers because yeah. they were on the cusp of, you know, coming, coming, coming back, but they weren't in a playoff spot. Yeah. And in, in regular, uh, regular yeah. life. But, um, no, but yeah, I mean, Vancouver's looking good. I don't think I have them advancing in the bracket challenge, but I would not be surprised yeah. if they do. Yeah, that was a tough one. Uh, number six, Nashville. And this one's a heartbreaker, but not surprising. <laughs> First, number 11, Arizona. Uh, Arizona won three games to one. We both had Nashville in five. Yeah, And I'll, I'll be um, honest with you, man. Uh, I think we let our fanism get in front of our analytic analyticism. Analyticism. It was very clear after game <clears> one. <throat> That we had memory loss through the four months. Well, it is the Preds. It's not like they were worse than they usually were. They were the team that we saw they were for they, the last for the whole season. They were streaking, and I think the biggest thing is, I, I mean, I would say overall in those four games, three of those four games, the the Preds played good hockey games. I think that in a five game series, though, losing game one when you get in that hole and you don't aren't able to fall back on your home, one of the very few home ice advantages that yeah. you gain from from playing at home not that they have played well yeah lately at, lately at home but i mean the f- game 1 we didn't look good we didn't play a full game and that's a that's a problem i think the other 3 games we just got beat we just got beat beat by a but by a better hockey team you know, they were the 11 seed, but uh, we're talking about a ton of injuries that kind of forced them to be there. Yeah. They have gr- had great goaltending. They had they had uh, killer, stellar defense. And I mean, 
it's exactly as you said. I mean, this the the Preds were the team that we saw. We got on a little streak afterward uh, towards the end, which kind of put us in that six seed. And it hurt, man. It hurt. Yeah. But I mean, it's, you know, it, 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 it's not one of those things where I didn't think that the better team won the series. Yeah. You know, and to be honest, uh, not many people I, I had in my predictions, Nashville going up against Vegas in the next yeah. round. We weren't beating Vegas, man. No. So if we're going to lose, might as well lose with a 12 and a half percent chance to get Lafreniere, which that is about five minutes away. We'll find out. We'll tell you guys live, which for you would be a couple days uh, after you already know. We're going to tell you live <laughs> on Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so moving over to the West, we've got number eight, Toronto. The East. We're going to move I'm sorry. to the East. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're moving it's over okay. to the East uh, where uh, we have number eight, Toronto, who fell to number nine, Columbus in five games. We both had Leafs in five, so no points there. And still, so far, I think we're both tied two points. <laughs> uh, yeah, that I mean, that was a good series. Yeah, Toronto. I mean, Toronto was v- massively disappointing. Yeah, that was a game. That was a that was a series that you and I, as far as the fantasy pool, lost some players in. Yeah, yeah, we uh, did. I lost. I lost Riley. I mean, I didn't. Tavares. And I think Matthews. I only lost Frederick Anderson. I had Tavares. You had mm. Matthews. And That's right. Riley. So yeah, yeah. But I lost Tavares and Frederick Anderson. But if we're being honest, Seth Jones and Zach Wierenski moving on. Yeah. It's nice for me. Wierenski you know? got you a good, good amount of points in that last game too, man. Because I got did. that power play game winner. He did, man. It's close. And the, obviously, we'll we'll get you. We'll, you know, we're going to actually f- uh, record the second uh, Pucks Out Fantasy yeah. hockey episode later today. So we'll encourage you that to after you listen to this, go listen to that, where you can get a lot more in depth yeah. of the actual fantasy yeah. world that that is going to bring. Yeah. And but, if you're um, listening to this on release day, that'll be out uh, right now. I think we're going to do every other Monday until maybe halfway through the off season, and then we'll uh, start maybe doing weekly to start doing rankings and stuff. Yeah, and then yeah, you know, maybe, maybe we'll eventually to- one day we'll have twice a week. You know, if it, the scheduling works out. But so let's. Uh, so number five, Pittsburgh, uh, and I was happy about this one day. Yeah. I was happy to be wrong on this one. As number five, art- Pittsburgh fell to the number 12 Habs. Uh, what was that? Three to one? Three one. Yeah. I mean, it was obviously Pittsburgh was my early pick. Yeah. I told, I, I've been saying this. I'll be happy to be wrong. And obviously my, my Habnadians moved on. Montreal looks good. I, I don't think that I have them beating, um, do they play? Do they play Philly? Yeah, I don't think I have them beat in Philly because yeah. Philly looks really, really good. Yeah, but, Philly does look good. But I mean, it, it's one of those things where I would not be surprised at all with the way they're playing hockey if they could come out and and you know give Philly a run for yeah, it. Yeah, I think they can give Philly a run for it. I, I don't think they have the, the the power. I don't think they have the the the, the star power. But the same can be said against Philly. Philly doesn't have. You know they, yeah, they've, I mean, got, they've got they've got they've got they you know got, elite players, but they don't have superstars. They both have they both have really good good team chemistry. Yeah, but at the same time, the same thing could have been said about the Blues last year. They had elite players, but they didn't have the superstars. Yeah, you know they've got Ryan O'Reilly. I'd say, very, but, I'd say Vladimir Tarasenko is a superstar. Yeah, well, I would have said that three years ago. I think now, I think in the past two years, he's kind of fell from superstar to more elite on that team i think that i think that he is still a superstar that had a much better cast around him yeah. is how i would i mean you know it's easy to not look like the same guy when you're not the only one doing anything yeah so i mean you know that's obviously um you obviously not yeah. a bad take i mean i can't sit here and really argue with you with what you're saying I he think that it's from just Ryan O'Reilly really stepping his game <clears throat> up exactly yeah, yeah and they got really good goaltending and you know so uh but yeah, I mean uh, the Habs moving on and, and playing Philly. Yep. That's gonna be it's gonna be a good matchup. Yeah, every sure. honestly, it looks like every matchup is gonna be. Like, no, there's I'm only so one excited. matchup that's like an eh, but even then, it's like a good matchup with the Avs versus uh, Arizona, which yeah. we'll talk about in a bit. But so now we've got number seven Islanders, whew, and this killed us. Uh, <laughs> who beat number ten Florida three to one? We both had Panthers in five. Yeah, yeah. They. I mean, it does. It's, it's not really killing us since we're both 
equally horrendous. You yeah. know? So, um, I mean, I really thought, obviously you did as well. I really thought that the Panthers were yeah. going to, I mean, I, I didn't necessarily like, I wasn't dead set they were going to win, yeah, we but I thought, they were, gonna I thought they were going to edge them out. Thought they were going to give them a, at least a good run, and and I mean those three games that New York won. I mean, it didn't even really look. That like was the a, least a interesting game. of the series. Very, I mean, very much. And it's, so I mean, my, the NHL my, knew that my, because my they agreement. they kept giving them the noon start time or the eleven o'clock Central start time. They knew that that was going to be just a shit series. Yeah, um, and I mean the Islanders, they we they are who <laughs> they are who we thought they were. Uh, yeah. To quote Dennis Green, you know, I mean. Winning low scoring games, but I mean, some of their star power showed up. You know, Matty yeah. Barzell looked really good. You know, uh, uh, their defense was looking really strong. Got really good goaltending. I mean, they're a team that the that the Caps are going to have to look out for, and that was one of the tougher choices for me in the bracket challenge. Yeah, but all right. So moving on to where you took the lead and the, uh, I think you're, you, yeah, you took the victory. This is your game winner on this one. Game winner, dude. I'm basically like Connor McDavid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, whereas you're not participating in the playoffs. <laughs> right, right. Well, I'm like Connor McDavid, where I have a nice game winner, but it's yeah. not very. If it makes you feel better, both you and Connor McDavid are going to have the same amount of points after round one in the playoffs. That does make me feel a lot better, except for it doesn't because. He was on my fantasy squad. <laughs> um, uh, but so number six, Carolina uh, swept the number 11 Rangers. Uh, I had Rangers in five. You had Hurricanes in four. Man, I'm going to I'm going to say this. I thought this was one of the most intriguing series in the entire in the entire qualifying rounds. I, I mean, it was chippy. It looked like playoff hockey, and I'm very sad that we didn't get more of it. You know, that was yeah. that was my biggest thing with the uh, with the Rangers um, Canes. I'm excited to see the Canes play, and if uh, a little sneak preview, I have the Canes advancing. Um, yeah, over I mean, Boston. I'm, I'm wearing my Hurricane sweater right now, and you know, I've been all aboard the Bruins train and thinking they're going to go all the way. And in a couple of my brackets, I, I mean, one of my brackets, I do, but in the bracket we have for the show, I've got Carolina going all the way to the finals. Beating, wow, I've got them beating. I got Philly winning it, dude. I've got Carolina beating the Avalanche in the finals. I have Philly beating the Avalanche. Yeah, my conference so. finals are Philly uh, is the Canes over Philly and the uh, Avs over Vegas. So if our you know our guesses from the qualifying round have shown us anything, it's absolutely not going to be yeah, that. It's, <laughs> it's going to be uh, Blackhawks versus the Habs. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be the Black yeah Blackhawks Habs or like the Blues. Uh, Blues Bruins or something, yeah. you know, or Blues Capitals. So, uh, but yeah, that was a very, I mean, Sebastian Ajo showed why he was a star in this league and it's exciting to see, uh, for the, for the Hurricanes and, you know, it, her, the Hurricanes are one of those teams that it's like, oh, I w- wouldn't really mind if they won, you know? Yeah. All right, so let's move into the round robins. Uh, we, I think you got double one, took the lead, baby. I think Boom. you, we got, yeah, you got one right, six to two. <laughs> so six in the, to two in the East, I had uh, Bruins, Caps, Flyers, Lightning. You had Caps, Bruins, Flyers, Lightning. All wrong on that. The final for that was Flyers, Tampa, Caps, Bruins. In the West, I had the Avalanche, Blues, Golden Knights, and Stars. Uh, in last place, you had Blues, Avs. Night stars. Boom. Look at that Avs pick, Dude, baby. Look at that Avs pick. We almost had the stars right. Till the very last second. We Freaking had the st- stars, dude. Ugh, Freaking geez. stars. Man, they can't make anybody happy. Freaking <sighs> stars. I can't wait till Davey gets here and we uh record this fantasy episode, dude. I'm gonna bash him. <laughs> Can you believe we invited a, a stars fan to be a part of our fantasy podcast? Well, we need someone who uh we can I was gonna say someone we can always beat, but Looking now, back at the Winter I mean, Classic, now, who knows? Now that, yeah, you know, and I mean, he was, you know, he's a he's a a pretty good fantasy player as well. Yeah. So you know, we we will set our bias aside for good content. Yeah. We're not going to invite a, a bad fantasy player for a fantasy show. That's right. We should though, because yeah. we could bash on him. All right. So uh, you got an extra two points. So I think the final score was six to two, baby. Six to, six to two. Well, I don't know what the possible points were, but 
a we, lot. Did, we did not uh, meet that a lot <laughs> <laughs> um and the first round of the 2020 draft is going to be the new york rangers bud look at lafreniere going to, I'm, I'm actually not mad about that obviously one of the preds but uh could have been could have been Pittsburgh. much worse could have been pittsburgh or could have been edmonton yeah. Could have been, no, I guess it could have been the Blackhawks, but yeah. you know, somehow they may have come up there and won it. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I, I think we were done with Vegas uh, and Blackhawks. If not, we should be. Uh, I think we both, for the most part, I've got Vegas winning that. You think you've got the Hawks winning in your bracket? Um, I believe that I do, but um, I'll I actually can't. pull up our my bracket right now so we can. No, I do have the, I definitely do have the Blackhawks winning. So, uh, got them winning in seven. So, uh, I really hope yep. that it's a good series. I, again, it's one of those situations where your boy won't be mad if he's wrong. Yeah. You know, like yeah, I've got Vegas winning in seven. Um, you got any sweeps? Ooh, do I have any sweeps? Uh, no, I, I do. yes, I do. I've got Colorado <laughs> beating Arizona in four. Okay, I do have a sweep. I have Tampa beating Columbus really? in four. I think that they're mad. I I've think got, they're upset. I've got Columbus winning in seven. Really? Really? Yeah. I just don't think that Colum- we're going to talk about it. We'll talk about yeah. it. We'll talk about it. So, and I mean, this is, we have until, we have until technically tomorrow from recording to, to lock, to lock these in. They're not locked in yet. Um, but, uh, I think mine's fairly locked in that Tampa Bay Columbus is the one that I, you know, that I had trouble with all these, mm-hmm. that matchup in particular, because of last year, yeah. are they going to be angry or are they in their heads now? No, nah, I think they're angry, dude. I mean, you know, I don't know. I mean, you could be absolutely right. Yeah. But the question is, are what which gif are they? Are they the uh, Key and Peele skit where he's sweating or is he the Jack Nicholson? Like the yeah. Gif? Yeah. I think that I think that if if I had to guess, I think the lightning players are probably excited about this draw. I would be, you know, I mean, uh, you get a chance so here's to, the thing though. I think it depends on game one. If Colum- if Columbus, a lot squeak of series it, do, if, yeah. well, yeah, but I'm saying if Columbus squeaks out game one, that'll fuck with Tampa Bay's head, dude, that, and then that yeah. they go from being angry to uh, now they're on the ropes and they're like, crap, we remember right. what happened last year. Right. Right. If Tampa, sure. if Tampa comes out fast and hard and they take it to Columbus, then I mean, but that can be said with any series. But I think for this series in particular, that well, first game is important. I as think the you, first goal of that first game is more important than any other. As series. you as you heard, I don't think that Columbus is going to get that first win. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's move into the Avalanche playing the Coyotes. I think this will be a, a decent series. I'm man. I, I mean, obviously, I think that the, I have the Avs go into the Stanley Cup. I have them winning in five. I. Would not be surprised if it's a better series than that, but I wouldn't be surprised if you were right and it's a sweep. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. And the reason I gave it a sweep, and one thing I've learned, whether it's March Madness or the NFL playoffs or October, uh, or it's you know October and you got baseball or it's the Stanley Cup playoffs, is that you never freaking know what's going to happen, man. And no, right. And, and honestly, you can look at all the analytics you want. You went really a really long way to say, I don't know what's going. Yeah. On. <laughs> so I think that there's going, I think that there's going to be a sweep somewhere. And I just had to pick a, pick a series to be yeah. a sweep. Yeah. And I'm mixing a little bit of, I don't know what I'm doing. Mix a little bit of analytics. Yeah. And I picked this one, you know, but I'm looking at the stats right That's now. That's not a bad one to call. Yeah, but looking at the stats, I didn't realize Arizona's uh, special teams were so much like, well, not so much, they're, but better they're than great, the Colorado. They're they've great. got a 19% power play compared. Oh, they've got, okay, they got a 19.1 power play percentage versus 19 for the color for of the Avs. You've got an 82. So their power play is just barely better. Um, they Their goals against are about a tenth uh, better than the Avs. But man, the it's the goals per game, the offense. Yeah. Colorado averages three point three seven goals per game. Arizona only two point seven. Yeah. I'll, it's the scoring that's going how, to hurt how, Arizona. How much is how many goals do they allow, though? Because Arizona's goals, a very defensive. So goals team. against is two point six for Arizona, just beating out Colorado at two point seven. Yeah. So, so that's, that's I that, mean the, that's where you're yeah. it's gonna be offense defense kind of yeah, kind of battle here yeah, for and, sure. Um <clears throat> and I think, I mean, I think Landis Skog is going to take it to them. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, yeah. I need him to with my uh, my 
Like, my skeleton I really fantasy hope, crew. I really hope Ryan Graves just scores like a bunch of hatties, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Which, yeah. Absolutely. We'll talk about that in the fantasy show, but you called him a trash man. I think he got like one of the first goals in the playoffs. That's sad. Uh, yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was more I was just calling you a farmer yeah. slash trash man. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> those two professions are the same. <laughs> no. Uh, the I, I mean, this is going to be a good series in my mind. I think that it's going to be very dependent, just like it was in the Pred series. How are, how are the Yotes? stars gonna play you know yeah. i mean is taylor hall and phil kessel have a series like they had last uh, against the predators i don't think so only because colorado is a better team and i think they can shut start the preds have never been really good at shutting stars down they've always let stars walk all over them whether it's yeah. patrick kane panarin taylor hall taylor hall brings it to us but all, stars every year. are stars are stars for a reason yeah but and good, so good I mean, teams shut stars down though we'll good see. teams when they get beat it's not because uh, for the most part it's not because the stars take it to them it's because uh, it, it, the, the the second and the third and fourth line guys make up for that yeah absolutely and, you know you I, I mean I, it's not that i disagree with that but uh but i mean i think it's a tall order for anybody and to just yeah no listen we're talking taylor, down hall, taylor yeah. hall and you know i mean phil kessel to an to an extent who i don't see as a superstar in this league but i see him as a he looked like it against the preds i i see him as a as a playoff monster yeah he knows how to win i mean I, I took him in the seattle draft i mean it's i mean i i think he, i think phil kessel you know the culture around phil kessel makes him seem like he's not like the best but right. i think on ice dude he well, is, i think he's a winner yeah he knows how to win and, and the thing is he'll never be he'll always be second fiddle which in some pl- some players that's you can be a star and be second fiddle. Yeah. Well, I would say honestly third fiddle behind Clayton Keller, yeah. who had a hell of a series. It, it, I guess you're, yeah, you're right because he was third fiddle in Pittsburgh too, behind Malkin and Crosby. Mm-hmm. You get a lot of secondary assists, man. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's shown. I mean, it's one thing to get a lot of secondary assists in Pittsburgh, but to do it in Arizona and be a, that that means you know your role. Like you said, a not not a huge goal a goal scoring team. So, I mean, yeah, it, it's going to be interesting. And, it, and it, it's one of those situations where I don't I think I agree with you completely. The Avs got it. I think yeah. that they, I think they're a much better team. I think they'll be able to hold them in check. But I most certainly wouldn't be surprised, yeah. you know, if, if, it, if it wasn't. But I mean, just like with really any of these series, yeah. there's not any of these that I was that I found difficult to or that I didn't find difficult to make yeah. my pick, you know, because you there's a case for the other side. Yeah, yeah, but dude, I can tell you what, man. Just I'm so excited, dude. I'm Me so too. like I'm just looking at this bracket. I'm like I'm I so know, excited, dude. dude. It's gonna I be exciting. Wait. Today, Megan was like, "So no hockey during our trip, right?" And I'm like, uh, <laughs> "I can promise it's you, no work." I was it, like, "I can promise you, it will not interfere with any plans we have." It's, which means it's we're not, we don't have any plans for one day. I'll just have my tablet on watching the games. It's work, Megan. You know, yeah. used to yes, you can always argue that oh, no hockey during, but now. It's your job, yeah. Bobby. I mean, I we don't give get the paid people, for it or yeah. anything, but you know, it's still our job. People right. expect certain things out of us. They, yeah. I mean, not much, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. If if anything, just uh, they expect us to watch the game so we can talk about how wrong we were yeah. afterward. You oh, know, yeah. I can't wait to see <laughs> how wrong these brackets are. Um, uh, next, we've got uh, number three <clears throat> Dallas going against uh, number six Calgary. That's another thing we. We screwed up in the original predictions. We didn't realize they were reseeding. Yeah, re- uh, yeah. And I think a lot of analysts, like they are now, they were talking about NBC, and I'm pretty sure one of the guys in the studio were like, "Oh, yeah, they're 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 reseeding." Uh, didn't, yeah, didn't know that. I thought that it was going to be after this round yeah. they were reseeding, and they were not. They've yeah. uh, they've lied to us. Yes. So. Uh, so I've got. Let's see. I've got Calgary winning that game in five. I have Calgary in six. Okay, you know, you think it's going uh, to be a little better of a series? Yeah, yeah, I think that uh, yeah. I think that Dallas is. I think that Calgary is going to come out and and strike hot. Yeah, uh, uh, I I obviously agree. I I think Dallas, even though they they barely won against St. Louis, they looked like hot hot garbage against a team that looked like hotter garbage. Yeah, absolutely. And the difference being that St. Louis, when they look like hot garbage, I feel like they can turn it around if they need to. Yeah. Dallas. Dude, uh, I think I texted y'all. They have they haven't won a regulation game in like a, I think now 167 days. That's a long time. Like, That's a long time, man. And what's great funny is when I was looking up that stat, I just went to a hockey reference, look up the last win, and the other website I was on before that, they put the most recent game up top, 
this time they put the, the oldest game from the start of the uh, season. So I was like, oh, they haven't won a game since then. And I was like, it's been 360 <laughs> days since their last win. It was their first <laughs> win of the se- season I was looking right. at. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I don't think, honestly, I, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if Calgary swept them, dude. But I'm going to give Dallas one game. <clears throat> and that's, I think, one too many. I don't think Dallas is a good team. I think that Dallas is a garbage team in the second half of the season, and they're continuing in that way. I don't know if it's as much as I'm I'm hating on Dallas like you are, as much as I'm just I'm feeling the flames. So here's the thing: I'm not. I have no hate no, against I know, Dallas. I, but they're not you, the Blackhawks or anything like that. I and I, I I respect Dallas. I like the city of Dallas. Sure. I like the team. No, no, mine I'm not is not saying purely that you, analytical. No, I'm not saying that you you are saying any of that stuff. But it it, it seems more. And I'm, and again, I don't want to put words in your mouth. It seems more that you are on the flames because you don't believe in Dallas, whereas I just believe in the flames. Yeah, I will say you know? that I, and I think it's maybe because I, I just don't watch as many flames games as I should. Yeah, obviously they've got to Chuck. Um, they got Johnny Hockey, Elias think, Lindholm. Yeah, and then Mark Giordano who didn't yeah, really step and, up. And that's the whole thing is I am unfortunately not as familiar with the Flames as I am all the other teams for some reason. That's just the one team that's always well, in my just years. Play as a, late yeah, they've they, always been in my blind spot, which is weird because like I lo- I love watching Vancouver. I've seen a lot of Vancouver games and LA games. Calgary's always fallen in my blind spot. Not sure why. Um, and but no, listen, I did watch their games and the, you know I watched pretty much every game during the qualifying rounds and they looked good. Yeah, and, they did, and that's why I'm giving. That's why I'm giving Dallas. Uh, you know, I, I would have orig- originally said six games, but mm-hmm. looking how good Calgary is, I think they slip up once, and like I said, I would not be surprised if they sweep them. I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily disagree with that. You know, I just think that, and it's funny because the stars, stars, you don't know if they're gonna show up. Yeah, you know that's the problem. And also, is Ben Bishop going to show up? I mean, yeah, that's a that's a that's a tough call. And I mean, the defense hasn't looked good. And again, it goes back to yeah, those round robin games are really really hard to judge it. Yeah, you know. So, and I think that what I'm what I'm more judging Dallas on is when a lot of these teams in the round robins they ended the season strong. Dallas and St. Louis did not. Mm -mm. Those two teams they needed to come out strong in the round robins because they needed to get the momentum because they still had. No momentum. You're right. The Bruins, they fine. We still believe in the in a team like the Bruins because we know what they can do. Right. They, you know, they won the Presidents Cup. We yeah. know they can turn around. Dallas, they ended. I mean, the the Preds swept them in there at the last two games. I well, like they, the Preds destroyed them the last two games that they played. One to zero, both yeah. games. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, no, it was, they destroyed them on the. eye. I mean, the, the no, score was not. It, yeah, just, just, yeah, yeah. I just felt like that. That was needed yeah. to be said. That, yeah, the score yeah. wasn't evident of, of the of the skill difference in those games, but uh, yeah. I think it's going to be. You know, I hope that it's a good series. This is one of the few that I find that could absolutely be a barn burner. Yeah, and here's the thing: you know? I could be completely wrong. We both know that Dallas, when they want decide to play, like in the first half season, they have one of the best defenses in the league. Yeah, and um, they I mean, th- their goalies can become brick walls at any time. And they have two of what are arguably the biggest, not, not, I, I wouldn't necessarily call Sagan and Ben superstars, but I would say they're two. I would say Sagan is a superstar. They're star. Well, but I, I would say my differential in being a star and a superstar is even when things are looking bleak and things are not going well, you're still showing up. Example, Connor McDavid. Yeah. You know, they lost that series three to one, mind you. And Connor McDavid still looked like the yeah. best player on the ice. And McDavid you know, and Drysaddle, they're not on our playoff teams anymore. They got us a lot of points. Yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. We would have so, been screwed if they hadn't shown up. So I, I would say that it is a it is a very regular thing for Sagan and Ben to just Disappear, not show up and disappear. And so that is where my categorization of a star in this league and a superstar in this yeah. league is, is, yeah, is differentiated, right. yeah. you know? Um, so, it, 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 and, but that at it, it, the exact same time of saying all that, those two guys could absolutely show up yeah, and, and Jamie the stars could stonewall and, and the stars could sweep, you know, that's, yeah. that's, that's where we're at right now with this playoffs and, and, and I these wouldn't set up and as dude. much as shit as I talked, I wouldn't be shocked. No, no, it would, it would be a little surprising. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it would be less surprising if the stars went in one and seven, 
And it, it would be more surprising if the stars go and win in four, but it could be anywhere in between those two things, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, so if you're listening to this, know that, uh, we don't really know what to talk about. Anything could happen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like, I feel like if you're here with us on episode 30, I don't think we even highlighted that. That's yeah. a, that's a milestone. I would say they already know. We don't know what we're talking yeah. about half the time, you know? I mean, but that's pretty much why we did this is because that's pretty much why we started this podcast is because we just like to talk, dude. Yeah. We just like to talk right, wrong. Yeah. We'll battle battle to the end. So let's talk St. Louis and Vancouver. Yeah, let's do this that. one. I think I might be alone on this one. I've got Vancouver winning in seven. Yeah, I think I have the Blues winning. I don't know. I have Listen, the Blues winning in six. I from what and here's the thing. I'm only going off what I saw the second half of the season in the round robin. And frankly, I think Quinn Hughes has that took that four months and taken a leap forward in his skill level. I think Quinn Hughes went from an elite rookie to a superstar in the league. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's hard to argue with that, that point. I mean, know? and that, and you know, that just goes to say, I mean, four months for a 27 year old player is a lot different than four months for how old is Quinn? He was 19, 20 years yeah, old. He's a, he's a youth. I mean, he's a street youth. For yeah. Sure, you know? I mean, I don't see how they can contain him. Yeah. And that's not even talking about the other guy. I mean, Elias Pettersson. I mean, they've got to deal with him. I mean, I, Brock Besser. I mean, I, mean, I think Van- more had, a, had yeah. a good series. I mean, I mean, yeah, they'll have to, uh, Vancouver have to do with Ryan O'Reilly and Tarasenko and Pareko. But you Vancouver know, is what I I would say, and I, I don't know if you agree with this classification, but they're scrappy. Yeah, you know they're they're a scrappy team, and I don't I, think the Blues can be scrappy, dude. This is not this is not the Blues from the '80s and the '70s anymore. There is something to say. I mean, again, going from qualifying rounds to playing in the actual NHL playoffs, there's something to be said about that. As, as a team that had just previously yeah. won the Stanley Cup. I think that the teams who coming out of round robins are at a big disadvantage. I agree. I absolutely Man. agree with that because there was nothing on the line, yeah. really. You know, and so the, you've had yeah. this other this other team who has had to scrap through a, uh, for all intents and purposes, a playoff series. Yeah, to get into the get into the actual playoffs, and I think especially for two teams in particular, St. Louis and Boston, they are going to struggle the most because here's the thing. They had nothing to gain. Yeah. But teams like Tampa Bay and Washington and Vegas and Dallas, obviously Vegas, uh, Dallas did not take advantage. They could only go up. Yeah. They, oh, they only had one way to go. Teams like St. Louis and Boston. They, only they, could have gone down. Yeah. Right, and right. so I think that going from this, I mean, everyone was saying, oh, it was the competitive. I don't, man, some of those games, those round robin games, I, they I didn't look competitive, dude. Yeah, and now, let me hit you with this, and just, I, I, I completely agree with that thought process, but to sit here and play devil's advocate, are some of these teams that are, that are just playing in that qualifying round that are playing for their NHL lives, are they going to come into this series a little more beat up than yeah, these other guys? I definitely, you know? yeah, and, and there are some cases where that is the truth. Um, but I think a lot of the teams that got beat up lost. Like, yeah. if, like if we were if we were sitting here and Winnipeg was in here, well, they'd be in trouble. Yeah, they, you, if you if Winnipeg was coming in here without Shifley and Patrick Lane, I would say they would get swept. Whoever they played, and to an extent, Blake Wheeler, even though yeah. he played the whole series. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, if we were talking about the Preds coming in here with uh, unhealthy, we we've seen the difference what a healthy Victor Arvidsson is. Arvidsson got hurt, of course, because that's what everything that's what happens to the Preds. Yeah, uh, we would be. Uh, but I think, you know, just looking through, I mean, Chicago's <laughs> healthy. Arizona is uh, I think uh, they're not exactly healthy. Kemper's got some issues. Calgary, I believe, is healthy. Uh, I'm looking through the list. I don't know many of the qualifying teams. And, you know, these I mean, they've got a day to two days to recover. Obviously, there might be some injuries that we don't know about. But for the most part, I think they're coming in fresh. Uh, and a lot of these teams that won the qualifying rounds, uh, ex- you know, minus Chicago, are young teams. Yeah. The one team I'm, I'm worried well, about. Well, Chicago's it, one of the youngest 
Are they now? On average, yeah. They're, oh, I they, guess it's they, their superstars are, 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 yeah, are older. Yeah. You're just thinking of Duncan Keith, Jonathan Hayes, yeah. and Patrick Kane. Patrick Kane, who bring up the average age by like 46 years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I think Vancouver is not going to have any issue recovering. I think those guys, they could, young. they could jump off a bill. I mean, I remember how I was at 19, and I, 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 was, I could recover from anything, and I wasn't a pro athlete. I, I, think, their, I think their youth is going to help them with the recovery process. I think yeah. that now we got to find out – if they know what it takes to win in the playoffs. And again, I mean, not that they didn't just win this qualifying series, but we can both agree that a five game qualifying series is a lot different animal, especially when you played Minnesota, no offense to Minnesota. Yeah, I agree with you, but it's a different animal when you got to go play the defending yeah. Stanley Cup. And here's champions. my thing. Saint, as much as I hate this man, Jordan Bennington can turn it on. Yeah. If Jordan Bennington turns it on, Vancouver doesn't stand a chance. My fantasy team needs him to. <laughs> but my, I'm questioning whether or not Jordan Bennington can turn it on. And you know what we saw? What was it last night? If they, just, if Jake Allen, if Jake Allen has to go in, uh, I Jake, I mean J- Jake Allen is Swiss cheese, dude. He's gonna. Yeah. I mean, he'll let a beach ball in, dude. I, I'm not worried about it. if Jake Allen has to go in. It's all but over for St. Louis. But all right, let's move over to the East and let's talk Philly, Montreal. I got to say, this is probably the set of all the matchups. This was I'm looking forward to the second most. Yeah. This is going to be, I think, great behind, hockey. Behind Bruins, Canes, yes, I'm guessing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I, would, I think that's everybody's favorite is Bruins, Canes. I'm, I'm very excited about that. But for what it's worth, I it's a hard toss up between... Vegas and, and the Hawks for me. That true, and I think that, that that's got I its own the, storyline of old versus new, but in, I think that Philly, Montreal, <clears throat> it's just something seems very vintage about that matchup. Yeah. Like oh, it's gonna sure. it's like I'm I hope, excited about it. I think it. we're gonna see a lot of fights. I think we're gonna it's gonna be a I think it's of the matchups, I think it's gonna be the most physical of and that might just be the reputation that both teams have from a while ago, but I think it's gonna be yeah, a great I mean, looking matchup. Through here, I don't think that that's a that's a bad call. I mean Philly, just the style of hockey they play, and and again they've got some stars on their team, and but they don't have superstars either. I, I wouldn't say. I mean, Claude Giroux is a superstar, or used to be a superstar. He is now more of a leader star on the team. Yeah, I'm a I'm I'm in agreement, man. I mean, it is it is amazing that these two one twelve matchups are so intriguing. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm excited. I mean, Carter Hart uh, versus. Uh, Carey Price Carey looks Price. like a man on fire. Yeah, and so did Carter Hart. I think goaltending is going to be great. Uh, I can't wait to see Ivan Provorov and Shea Weber drop the gloves. Yeah, well, <laughs> Provorov, uh, I don't know if he he want he, he's going to want to do that. You know? <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I mean this is going to be a really good series. I mean Jonathan Druin's played a, a hell of a played a hell of a series against um, against Pittsburgh. Max Domi played really well. It was just, it was just, I feel like both teams are very similar in that, in which they are relying more on meshing with their team chemistry rather than relying on a guy to score here or there, you know? But I think, I think what's going to, the big difference and what's going to win the, win the series. So first off, I've got Montreal, I'm sorry, I've got, I've got Philly winning in six. I think it's going to come down to special teams, man. I think. Yeah, for sure. The penalty kill. Philly's got an 81% penalty kill compared to Montreal's 78. Yeah. I think it's that's what it's going to come down to is, uh, you know, when you put the physicality beside when you're just playing straight hockey, can Montreal stay out of the box? Yeah. Can I'm they stay my- disciplined? And because when they because, you know, Philly's got a 20% power play. Uh, they're. I have I have Montreal or uh, not Montreal. I have Philly. Same, I have Philly. Same thing. Maybe our brains want us to go Montreal. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be mad. Uh, I, you know, that's my my second team there. Yeah. Uh, I have the Flyers in five. I yeah. think that it's going to be a f- a great series. I think the Flyers are just going to be too much for them. You know, I think that they're yeah. they're gonna yeah. they're not really gonna. As a fan, I want to see Montreal win. As, yeah, agree. So, because you know, while they're not my second team, I have love for the Habs. Yeah. Um. Well, I'm about you know, and Weber. Just yeah. a lot, Weber alone. You got got a lot of love for Weber. Yeah. You know. Um. But I just don't. I I, I don't see 
and let, you know, barring something crazy, Philly losing that dude. They're so oh, hot right now, right. dude. They've been hot. They've continued to be like, hot over a four are, month break. Kevin Hayes yeah. is killing now, it. They do have some injuries. They are banged up a little bit. You've got Nolan Patrick. Well, he, Nolan Patrick's been injured for a long time. Um, he, yeah, he, uh, he was. He's gonna be back in October. Uh, but Voracek and Lindblom are are banged up day to day. We'll see what happens with them. Uh, but dude, I think, yeah, so I got them at six, but then moving down, we've got Tampa Bay and Columbus and I'm, uh, I've got, I've got Columbus winning in seven. Yeah. And I have the, I have the, the lightning winning in four. I think I, I've already mentioned that. Yeah. Um, I think the, the lightning are going to be mad. They're going to be upset. I think you're going to be more mad after the, after the, after if the they series lose in seven, <laughs> then yeah, they'll, they'll be a little bit more mad. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I think. I think the guy, I think the boys are going to remember. I think they're going to, they're going to look back to last year and as good as Columbus looked against Toronto, I don't think that this is as good of a team as it was last year in the playoffs. Um, and this is more me banking on the craziness that is 2020, sure, dude. I mean, like, it's not bad to bet against, you know. Like, it's just so many cra- like betting against normalcy yeah. is the best call. Like at every turn, it seems like, oh well, I couldn't possibly be wrong about this one. Well, then and I'm see, wrong about I'm, it. I'm more. I understand. I could definitely be wrong, but it's just uh, you know, it's one of those things where it's a feeling. Like it's yeah. hard to pick a sweep in any of these series. Yeah, I'm the same way, but. It was just a, I, just a little bitty feeling yeah. that, you know, like, I'm, you know, in my heart a little bit. I was just like, dude, the, you know, Kucherov and, and Hedman and, and Vasilevsky, they're going to come out. They're going to come out ready to play. And, you know, and Columbus looks so good. They look so good. So question, if Columbus takes game one solidly, like they, they win for nothing. Do, do you backtrack and think that, or do you still now think Tampa Bay now wins in five? Um, no, no. If Columbus wins game one, and especially if they win it handily, I think, I think actually my, my opinion would be different if Columbus wins a close game one rather than a big game yeah, I can one. I see that because then Tampa sees it as a fluke. If, if Columbus comes out and wins big game one, I think it's going to be Tampa in six. If Columbus comes by and squeaks by, I think it's Columbus in five. So if they win like you know? a game in, a, in an overtime. Right. Or just like they come back from something and they're down. You know, that's demoralizing. Whereas if you come out and get shellacked, you know, guys give up way earlier than yeah than, than that. So, I mean, it, it, this series could really go either way. I think this is probably on – just on the surface, it's not as an intriguing matchup as a lot of these, but just because of what we got last year, it is more intriguing than a lot that it's probably not going to be one of my one of my favorite series to watch, but the storyline is better than almost every other series. Yeah. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, now, moving into the one matchup that uh, I, I this one's really hard for me. This man. one's tough for me too. Yeah. If you're talking about Caps Islanders. Yeah, Caps Islanders. Yeah. Like, not only is it tough to guess, it's tough to know if it's even going to be an entertaining series. Yeah. I mean, the Caps didn't look great, and the Islanders play that <sighs> style of hockey where they may win, but but it's not as fun to watch the Islanders. But then the play question hockey. is, was Ovi just sandbagging it or was he struggling? Because that's the thing with 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 uh with the grade eight, is if he decides to turn it on. He could go out and in game one, get himself a hat trick and that demoralizes the Islanders and he just goes out and does it again and again. And he just because um, you know how teams are, you know, teams are blind to him. They will. They'll he scores let, 12 goals yeah. in, in the series. <laughs> like they'll just let him score. <laughs> games. Yeah. I mean, it's insane. Um, I've got caps and six in that in that one. I think Washington star power. I think that they are going to uh, win. I, I think they got it, man. And I got them. So I don't I don't foresee it being that hard for the caps yeah um, i have i have caps and six as well actually um i i just think that the goal scoring is gonna outdo the islanders defense yeah. first who's goalie mentality. up in, on, in the aisles right now uh Var, uh varlamov okay and grice have been have been uh i don't know i you know that's one of the series i didn't get into this uh that let's much. look at their stats so Goal who okay. Uh goals per game for Washington is three point four, kinda as we expected. Uh to only two point seven. 
goals against the Islanders are actually better. Goals yeah. against, they've got 2.79 compared to 3.07 uh, for the Caps. Yeah, the, the Caps are a higher scoring team, therefore yeah. Point, allowing yeah. more goals per game just the, as a general rule. So Special teams falls slightly in the Caps' favor. Uh, you got 19% power play or 19.5% power play versus 17. So that's a pretty big difference for power play percentage. Penalty kill, 2% difference uh, in favor of the Caps. I, I don't. I don't see you know something crazy happening with that. I think the Caps have that pretty solidly. Yeah, I I could see the Islanders winning, but it's going to take a lot of pucks to fall their way. Yeah, you know, um, pucks to fall their way and pucks not to fall in the Caps' favor. A lot of uh, you know, Ov hitting the bar. <clears throat> right. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I, I I agree with that. Not super intrigued by this series, if no. we're being honest. You but, know, it's one of the like probably one of my least. Like we've said a dozen times already, it's twenty twenty. Who knows? It could turn out to be the best game, best series in the playoffs. Absolutely, and that's yeah, that's yeah. that's totally plausible. Yeah. But, but I just feel like the Islanders' play style yeah. just isn't conducive to a, a winning fun. Well, the winning they win, but <laughs> yeah. It's just not a fun play in the playoffs. Series. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so let's move on to what I think is both of our both of our favorite series is going to be. Yeah, I'm and I think for many people, this it. is a rematch of what was it a couple, uh, several years ago, Stanley Cup uh, or not Western Conference Finals from a couple Eastern years ago. Eastern Conference Finals. Yes, I'm at Eastern Conference Finals from a couple years ago. Uh, Bruins uh, ranked in coming in at number four versus number five Carolina. Oh, I'm excited, dude. Man, that's going to be good hockey. The freaking the freaking Canes are looking great, dude. Um uh, I I mean it's I have the Canes winning in uh in 7 games. I'm I've got them winning in 6. I'm just excited for this this series and it can go it could go 4 games for the Bruins. I would be surprised if it is Four games for the the Canes. I'd be surprised if it goes four games at all. Sure, I would be surprised completely. But if the Bruins come out and win in four games, that's not like a yeah. that's not like a world beating type of. Which, move, to be honest, you know? I wouldn't be mad at because my fantasy team will greatly appreciate that. Yeah, if, if they go down in four games, the Bo- I'm done. The Bobby Bruins. <laughs> yeah, because uh, um, I've got <clears throat> Pasta, Marshan, McAvoy, and Rask. So. Well, freaking. Uh, I, I cannot believe I let him slide. Uh, freaking Aho, dude! I can't believe I let Davy get Aho. Yeah. I'm just I'm frustrated with myself over that because I thought that I thought that I could get him around later than I yeah. did, and I mean, ah, oh, it sucks because yeah. I think I took Tavares over him. You yeah. know, oh, that just hurts. That hurts. Yeah. Well. Um, I, I think the X factor in this, uh, you know, all the scoring, all the star power, I think the X factor is going to be goaltending. Yeah. I think who gets the better goaltending, you know, and uh, I don't think that it is um, it is crazy to say that Mrazek might outshine Rask. Yeah. You know, I mean, Rask is I also is known- wouldn't be surprised if. They become barn burners, and they, you know, we that's see games seven to four. That that that's what I'm saying, man. I mean, I mean, I feel like the Bruins could absolutely win this in four. I don't think the Canes have that kind of ability right now. At least, I mean, they might, but just to come out and just sweep the Bruins like they yeah. did the Rangers. So, so uh, I've got them in six. You said you got them in five or seven. I have the Canes in seven. Canes in seven. Uh, so now let's move on to the second round. I've got we'll we'll just work our way backwards. Uh, Carolina versus Washington. I've got Carolina beating Washington. Uh, I don't think it made us select how many games in though. Did it for you? Uh, no, I think it's just the first round. Okay, the game. Amount. So I guess we'll go in. I think Carolina is going to beat Washington in uh, in seven. Yeah, I have uh, I have Philly and Carolina. So. Um, I think I have Philly winning that series. I think that Philly would win in six. I didn't even pick those. So, you know, just throwing it off the cuff. And then I have uh, Tampa and Washington, of which I have Tampa winning. And I would say Tampa and five if I uh, if I had to just throw a throw a guess out there. So obviously I have Philly and, and Tampa in the Eastern Conference finals, of which I have Philly going yeah. on and i've got philly over columbus uh i'm gonna say it could really be four games but i'm gonna give columbus one game i'm gonna get a spot in one game i'm gonna say philly and five 
okay. over Columbus, where I then have Philly and Carolina. I've got Carolina over Philly in five. Wow. Yeah. You have them moving to the uh, or got, to the finals. I've got Carolina. I've got Carolina winning the whole thing in this wow. bracket. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, back over to the West, uh, Vegas versus Calgary. Uh, I think that's it's going to be a really good matchup. I think that could uh, w- could possibly be one of the best matchups if it gets there. But I've got Vegas winning, and I'm going to say Vegas in seven. Okay. And then Colorado versus Vancouver, and I've got I'm going to take Colorado in five. Okay. I mean, uh, so you have have Colorado and Vegas in your Western Conference with, finals with Colorado in six. Okay. I have uh, I have Colorado Blackhawks, and I think that um, I'll take I'll take Colorado in six. And then I have the Blues, Calgary, and I have the Flames winning in seven. And so I have um, <clears throat> I have the the Avs playing the Flames in the Western Conference Finals, and I have the and I have the Avs beating them in five games. And so my Stanley Cup final is going to be Colorado, Philly. I, yeah, and I have Philly winning that, um, and I didn't pick a game amount, but I'm going to go with Philly in six. And uh, the they had you pick the total goals scored yeah. in the uh, in the final, and I have 34 goals scored. Okay, so I've got Carolina over Colorado. I'm going to say I think it's going to be. I think that the 2020 Stanley Cup will be watched for years. I think it's going to be Carolina over. Well, Col- might be the last hockey we ever get. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take Carolina <laughs> over Colorado in in two overtimes to win it with 41 goals scored in the, in, in the final series. Okay, um, man, this is going to be good. So when next week or two weeks when we come back and have to completely reseed everything because yeah. we were wrong about everybody. Yeah, uh, we'll see who we have winning. For the next time. Yeah. <laughs> and how about that? It, what What do you say if we're both, if, if both of our brackets are just shot to hell, we uh, start at the second round or we, we, we do it again and see, we'll see where we come and, you know, we'll just. Uh, okay. How about this? If we, how about we just repick when the second round comes, but if the team that you picked to win this round is there, you get an extra bonus point. The weird. Corey Perry. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't. Wild. I think that I think the first read was a good one. Now, now I'm overthinking it. Outlandish. Each sixth chick sat on a stick. A little tongue twister. And downright dumb. You're kidding me. It's time for the joke of the week. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this one is pretty much on brand. Uh Alberta Brewery apologizes for misusing Maori language, naming beer pubic hair. Huru, <laughs> huru? Uh, huru, uh, huru. New Zealand hopped pale ale. It sounds like it's, a you know, obviously a cool named beer. I want to go to Hell's Basement Brewery, though. That yeah, sounds, sounds like a dope, dope spot. So I, I, I kind of... Uh, I think we should make a... That we should make that... Where is that in Alberta? I... I think that it is a little, it's a little odd that we're again in 2020 when you can literally Google things that you're going to use another language to create a beer and you're not even going to find out what that means. Pubic hair. Like, come on. Like there wasn't one dude in your entire brewery that was like, let's Google it just to make sure, just to check it out. Like, (laughs) but honestly, I wouldn't have apologized. I would have dug in. Yeah. I would have said, no, we meant to name it pubic yeah, hair. Yeah, <laughs> you get a, a sweet graphic design. And I mean, hey, it, art is subjective, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. I mean, like pubic hair can be beautiful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like there was a time where like chicks were doing like lightning stripes with their with their landing strip. You know what I'm saying? My thing is, you know, I mean, obviously you, you, you don't want to be offensive, but are the... Are the indigenous population of New Zealand really drinking a lot of Canadian beer <laughs> enough to, enough to wear enough to wear they've got to they got to put out an apology <laughs> like what like dude they like released it on Twitter or whatever was there like some dude that was just like 
up in the woods or whatever, or whatever's in New Zealand mountains, or I don't know. I mean, I think they have a Lord little, of the Rings. They've got okay. a lot of everything. They got some woods. They got yeah. some mountains. So they like, got some was there some dude that was up there that was just like, let me go, Kiwis. let me go check the Twitter feed to make sure that nobody's uh, been, or is this just a situation? Oh, I can guarantee you, pe- the, the the Maui people did not call them out for this. This is not. This, this is was definitely Karen the who Ma- called them Ma- out. Maori, Maori. I feel like you you keep saying Maui, and that's a place in Hawaii. Okay, so the Maori. Yeah, they're different completely. That's that's what I'm saying. This is definitely like I should be the one apologizing. You should apologize. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you're calling them a completely different thing. You're not just calling them, you know, using their language to say pubic hair. You know, it's, it's got to be it's got to be some people that are just you know, wanting to be mad about everything and they, you know, they're like, "What does that mean?" and they googled it because, you know, the brewery themselves couldn't they're like, these guys are calling this beer pubic hair. And they were mad, dude. They asked to see the manager. They, <laughs> you know, I, again, I go back to why, why not check? Not, he said, he said it was brought to my attention a few days ago that the new shop, there's a new shop in Wellington and it's, and it's called Huru Huru Authentic Leather. He said, He sent the shop a Facebook message to ask what they thought the word meant. He said they responded that they they found it in a dictionary as a word for feather. (laughs) So So I typed it in and the Maori uh, translate comes out as fur. Yeah. When when the Maori look at look at the name of your store, they're not going to see feather or soft leather. They're going to see pubes. (laughs) 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 Yeah, I would have just dug in. I would have said, yeah, we knew, you know, we knew about the the pubic. The pubic hair situation yeah. because i mean you know that's the great thing about craft beer man you can get away with anything product to be rebranded you know honestly again i'm going back you to just call it pubic hair in english i'm going yeah right exactly <laughs> we're gonna rebrand it as pubic hair because i mean if we're gonna you know we're all in yeah i just you know i feel like if they rebranded it i think i'd be out on it you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, uh, you can rebrand it if you want to uh, to satisfy some people that are probably not going to buy your beer. What if they just rebrand it, keep the name, but just change the logo? That's how they should rebrand it. See, right. Yeah, right. They're like totally messing with people. They're <laughs> like, yeah, we're rebranding this, but it's just like a new picture of like yeah. some pubic hair. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's about two hours away from downtown Calgary. So whenever we make our hockey trip out to the flames, well, you might have got to take an expensive Uber and go check this place out. Yeah. Well, no, I'm not going because they're rebranding. <laughs> if they kept it as is, I'd be in. But rebranding, you boys out. Yeah. All right. Let's get out of here. Uh, we're I mean, not, we're not done, not out of here, yeah. like of the episode, but out of out of talking about pubic hair. All right. Uh, so <laughs> we've uh, we are finishing up. Well, last so last week we finished up our Lord of the Rings discussion. Uh, next week we will start our Hobbit discussion. And right now, and we're just gonna have a little fun. And uh, this is not a battle royale. This is not a fight. We I would win if it was. We will see because we're gonna do it. So uh, we'll see because uh, right now the uh, my stats for. Uh, drafts and stuff are pretty dominant. Yeah, but it's on Twitter. So and like, Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not and that's not helping your point, Bobby. You know, <laughs> I want to get like a draft, like you know, like I want the votes to be like from like around a fire pit dude, <laughs> or at a bar. You know that that's where I shine. All right. You know, so you dominate on the on the social media sphere because I, I because honestly, you could frame the poll however you want. And I would have no idea because we're being honest. I much prefer just complaining about the draft results than I do actually being involved in it. So. All right. So we are ranking our favorite Lord of the Ring uh, characters. Are we are we are we uh, polling this too? No, this is not a poll. This is uh, I mean, we can pull it. If I mean, what is there to pull? (laughs) Well, it's not a this is not a win or a lose. This This is is who we like. Well, right. We can poll it. This isn't a win or lose. It's who also agrees with our favorite yeah. characters characters comparatively because i don't be on, think we hit yeah. I, I, you know there was one or two that maybe i was thinking about taking from yours and putting on mine but i was like no you know i'm just gonna because like besides my top one i really don't have like a there's some people i don't like yeah but there's not anybody that i'm like oh they have to be up there but do uh, we want to go five to five to one? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, uh, mine 
is my number five. And I put him on here because you had a Hobbit and I felt like you picked the wrong one. So I had to put my own Hobbit on there to top yours. I'm a merry guy. You know, uh, Mary Brandybuck is his name. Dope name, by the way, yeah. obviously. It's like Merrimus or something, actually. Uh, so Mary is uh, now you got the second best Hobbit, yeah. in my opinion, you know, uh, on, on your list. There is no third best Hobbit. Those are the only good Hobbits. Those are the only good There's Hobbits. There's the bad Hobbits. They're, <laughs> yeah, they're other Hobbits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, I, I just loved Mary. I always found that he had. Pippin, I felt like, had like the funny lines. Mary was kind of more of my spirit hobbit, where yeah. he had very witty retorts. I don't think he knows about second breakfast, Pip. <laughs> 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 yeah, so uh, so uh, old Mary, old Mary from Mary and Pippin, my number five. Who do you got at number five, buddy? Number five, I've got, I've got Boromir, man. You're such a, that's, uh, I mean, uh, only because it's Sean Bean, dude. He's such a traitor. Okay. I'm I mean, so he's real though. I mean, like, sure. He, he, that I mean, because it, really it's, dead. <laughs> yeah. Well, that could be said about all of his roles. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's a Sean. <laughs> that's a Sean Bean trait. <laughs> yeah, we should do a, a whole discussion on just Sean Bean. Do like a five. 100 episode series of Sean Bean. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I liked Boromir. When he had his moments, I just, I don't know, man. He, you know, he showed what the ring was really about. Yeah. So I was just searching for, uh, there was a specific scene of Pippin I was looking for, and I typed in, uh, uh, and I know I saw it the other day, and I typed in best of Pippin scene. Uh, came up with a bunch of Scotty Pippin. Yeah, I was about to say, I was about to say, yeah, man, that's probably not the, uh, the best way to Google it. <laughs> you know, the most well-known Pippin. Yeah, yeah. Dude can dunk. Yeah. <laughs> he, he had some hops for a hobbit. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I had Baromir, uh, yeah, a complex character, one of, you know, the best, some of the best acting in the series comes from Sean Bean. I mean, I mean, but let's be honest, the acting great acting is not a shortage in the series but he steals the sh scenes that he is in one does not just simply steal the entire lord of the ring series unless you're sean bean yeah okay <laughs> so number four and i i like this one and oh, man we, we could have done a top 10 and he yeah, would have been in we there could have. but i he just didn't make my top five my number four is freaking tree beard dude I loved Treebeard. I thought he had great insight. He, you know, he wasn't super knowledgeable about the world uh, uh, outside of, you know, the forest. Yeah. He had no idea, no clue about a, about hobbits. He thought they were baby orcs, you know. Uh, Treebeard, I mean, dude, just purely based off of his his fight scene at uh, at Old Saruman's palace, dude. Yeah, it's yeah, like, that's enough to, that, that's enough to, to, put him on my top five alone, but like, just like the whole theory of the like the trees ends, yeah. being able to talk and stuff. Yeah. So tree beard, I feel like he, while not getting a lot of play throughout the movies is a very, very valuable asset. Like think about if Isengard wouldn't have fell at the same time as, um, the, at, at Helm's deep, the orcs yeah. at Helm's deep, like we're talking about a different war, Yeah, you know? So, uh, I think there's numerous reasons why tree beard is on my top five, but mostly because dope beard as a tree. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's super dope. Yeah. So what do you got at number four? Number man? four, and we were just talking about him is uh, Pippin, dude. I mean, whether it's in the beginning or in fellowship where they're first off, uh, as much as I don't like hobbits, dude, I could drink with hobbits any day. Any dude. day, dude. Dude, I, I love shanties, dude. We could out drink the shit out of hobbits, oh, dude. dude. You know what I'm saying? They're like three foot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, so I mean, I love, I'm a big fan of shanties and like bar, like sing alongs. And dude, the hobbits know how to do it, dude. Yeah. I agree. Like the dwarves have some good sing alongs. Some of the hobbits. Others are like Frodo. <laughs> yeah. What a dick. Yeah. Uh, yeah I don't but, know if I'd go that far, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying he he 
he could have just trusted Sam the whole time and not been. But we'll get it. That's a whole different. Yeah, conversation. well, he was Rudy was offside, so it was yeah. hard to trust Sam. <laughs> you know, very true. Uh, but no, so I mean, and when they come back after the Battle of Isengard, they come and you know uh, they're you know they're like he's like welcome me lords and they're just uh, high and drunk. Oh and yeah, having a yeah. good time. Uh, <laughs> uh, and when uh, I'm pretty sure it was Pippin, it was like it uh, it it comes in pints. <laughs> I didn't know it came in pints. <laughs> I'm gonna get one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, over there. Yeah, that's uh, that's Frodo Baggins. Yeah, right over see, there. I feel like that's like, I feel like we perf- both perfectly picked the Hobbit that like represents us because like I just found I found out that it had a, had a pint and I went ahead and got one, <laughs> and then I come over with the pint and you're like, bro, I didn't know it came in one, even though I already have this. I'm going to go get another one. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm double fisting here, but if I just go and double fist again, yeah. I just have to hope a pitch doesn't knock on my beer over. <laughs> um, so yeah, Pippin took it number four. Uh, I felt obligated to put a Hobbit to be completely honest, but I knew it had to be only one of those Hobbits. Sure. Um, but you know, and I actually went back and forth, but even, you know, yeah, I don't like Hobbits, but uh, Mary and Pippin love those two characters. Yeah. Man. But you don't have to like an entire group of fake you know, Lord of the Rings characters to not enjoy yeah. what those two gave you and yeah. brought. So. Good way to skirt around saying you don't have to like an entire race because <laughs> yeah, I was, you know, you're, you said it, Bobby said it. Okay. Because like, again, I didn't say it. <laughs> That's really what I want to be clear on here. All right. So my number three, and I was surprised at this for my own, you know, for myself, but honestly I have, I have Arwen. As uh, as my number three, I think she was the better half of the, you know, the marriage to Gondor. I first of all, Liv Tyler, oh, she's wonderful. Yeah, you know, I think that's mostly why she made number three. Like if I would have just read the books, I have no idea whether or not she would have ranked uh, this high. But Liv Tyler was fantastic. And like just the freaking scene when she's being chased by the yeah, ring. Race, one of the dude. best scenes in the entire oh, series. My- goodness dude and she she gets in there you know she gets in the water and she starts elvishing them dude yeah. and, you know like i was wild dude i mean you yeah. know you know i loved it so like i loved arwen i thought she was awesome she s- literally saved the entire the reason we got movie two and three is because she saved frodo's life and didn't get the ring stolen an hour into the first movie. So, I mean, you know, you're welcome for all of this wonderfulness that we've been able to continue to talk because of her. So, uh, so Arwen is my number three. What do you have at so number three? This guy's, he's got a minor role in the, in, he has a very, very minor role in the books, much larger role in the movie. Um, and he's, he's such a badass, and I can see why they expanded on his role. That's Hall the year of Lorien. Yeah, I thought it was uh, Legolas' yeah. father for a good bit of time. Yeah, you said I'm that, and still, I remember thinking, like, I was like, well, that doesn't seem right I'm at all. Still, they both have blonde hair, so. That just seems pretty racist to talk about wood elves like that. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, maybe. <laughs> hey, if the, if, if the bow fits, all right? <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, so in the books, <laughs> he is simply just a scout on the on the edges of the wood elf uh uh, land uh, in the movies he takes a much different role he leads a I guess a uh, whole army of elves to dude, Helm's that, Deep that freaking scene dude, dude. the whole scene of them like showing off <laughs> is dope dude, they all marched in and all those people are like I'm a farmer dude yeah. Where, me and Bobby back here <laughs> <laughs> yeah but what's crazy is like, and if you go on the Reddit page, people are pissed about that scene. They're like, why are they, why, why would they have given just a scout an entire like army? And it's like, well, it's a movie. Yeah. And I mean, he's dope. Yeah. yeah and they needed to awesome. round, they couldn't just send a random, they couldn't just keep introducing random elves into the movie. And I mean, right. I mean, they needed to. Uh, very, con- again, I have my whole already life. already confused. My whole life, I've been a huge Lord of the Rings fan since it's come out in, on movie form. And I literally, for forever, the first th- time watching The Hobbit through, I thought it was Legolas's father. And yeah. I'm still not convinced that it isn't. Um, real quick segue, and this is why our episode's always so long. <laughs> have, did we, have we discussed the very confusing fact that they use uh, Roman and, I guess, uh, Earth days of the week? 
in, yeah. in Middle Earth. Have we discussed that at all? No, no. It's very confusing. Yeah. Where well, did they, they get got, th- They got th- menus. Th- so so. What, what I'm saying is the, the word Thursday comes from Thor. Does Thor exist in that pl- world? Do they have a Thor there? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I, Monday, you know. I believe, comes from the uh, from Mars. It's they, like a Mar. Yeah. It's like a Mar- like what? They you have know. they have Jan. I'm looking. It's in the biography of uh of well, on January fifteenth. I'm like, what? can I throw can I throw my explanation out there? There are infinite numbers of galaxies and universes and stuff. So it you know it tends to uh, you know it tends to make sense that in one of these worlds where elves and dwarves and you know trees and wizards are that they would accidentally happen upon our same days of the week system yeah that'd be my guess i don't you know well, I don't know. well my biggest thing is you know listen I'm not a calendarist so uh <laughs> tolkien is one of the greatest writers to ever exist he was very adamant about um fully immersing yourself in the story and everything about it and the lore and that's one thing it's not just me i mean i'm not i'm not just oh yeah, i'm, yeah, I'm sure. not bringing this for the first time people are like oh my god what a, what a great point oh. it's well talked about that and, and tolkien's before uh you know before he passed even discussed that discussed his uh regrets with the story yeah that was one of the things he regrets is doing that and there was another one where um i, I can't uh think of the actual character but there were oh the um We'll talk about it in the Hobbit. the The trolls. He gave the trolls like regular names, like Steve. Gary and Dave and Steve. <laughs> and he regrets giving like them just regular people's yeah, names. But like you know, but that almost makes to, me wonder: is we maybe have that to, maybe trolls have maybe that's how uh, the dude wrote an entire language. Let's cut him a break on the days of the week, <laughs> yeah. you know. And like honestly. It's very helpful, you know, because oh, like yeah. we need at least a little bit of regular. Yeah, because if they had just gone like, <laughs> we're like, okay, is it a twelve day week? We don't know. No, right, <laughs> exactly. They could have totally, totally messed with us there. Yeah, you know, like how long are the days? Like, I feel like it was just one of those things. Like after he wrote a whole Elvish language, and then re, and then wrote an entire story to follow around that Elvish language, he was like, oh shit, yeah, I forgot to make up days of the week. Uh. Monday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't realize it's a book, and so you can't pronounce things in a book. And he's like, oh, this is going to be pronounced Monday. Uh, yeah, but exactly. it's just Monday. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah, so why don't you take us into your number uh, two? Gandalf the White. Dope. I, yeah, I love, you know, and I feel like those are two distinct individuals, Gandalf the Grey and Gandalf the White. They yeah. were, you know. I, you know, Gandalf the White brought just brought so much to the story. While like I was not really sure why, you know, he didn't have the memories initially that he used to be Gandalf the Great. Like, did he just think he was just born this large wizard? You know, uh, I mean, uh, I feel like know. that's such a complex issue that we could spend an entire episode on. Sure, let's not. But you know, I was just let's thought do it a was full weird. biography but, 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 of Gandalf see, the Great. But the thing is, like, he did remember after somebody said Gandalf, he was like, yeah. Oh yeah! Oh, that that's is a, what they used. I mean, to I'm call going by me. that name now, just with a white. But yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah, that is what they used to call me. It's like well, you know, like we used to call you because we're talking to you right yeah. now, you know. Uh, but yeah, it was just like you know, super cool. Like him bringing the bringing the uh, Rohinians across over the over the hill. The Rohim. The, yeah, I like the Rohinians. <laughs> I think we've discussed it before. Yeah. And I think I'm stuck on it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, he was such a valuable asset to the team. Uh, yeah. Even though he was always late to things like way late. A wizard is never late. He's only, you know, whatever time that just, <laughs> that's something that, you know, that's something that somebody who's always late says, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, Oh, I, I'm, I arrived precisely, precisely when I want to do. Yeah. yeah. Did you though? How many times in wizard school did he say that? And he probably got like beat. For it's it. like, yeah, it's like, yeah, well, you're still going to get this demerit. Okay? I think in wizard school, they beat you. They don't give you demerits. <laughs> Something tells me you get beat in wizard school. Yeah. Well, maybe, but it's demerits. not like some Harry Potter shit, but demerits. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So, okay. Who you got at number two? So man? before I move into my number two, I want to just go off yours um, and say, and I think this, he deserves a, or she deserves a, um, Honorable mention, Shadow Facts, dude. Shadow, oh, yeah. Shadow the Facts horse. is the. I mean, look, dude, it takes a real, it takes some real awesomeness to put Legolas in awe. That's yeah. the horse of all horses or whatever he said. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, what? <laughs> like, I like how he rides her with no saddle. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and he just. 
He just whistles, dude. And she's just like, but she's not ever just like close. She's yeah. like running across a field. <laughs> it's like it's like playing Red Dead Redemption. It's the whole, You call the horse and no matter where you are, the horse is always coming from some ridiculous far away. Yeah, it's like, you know, like, why don't you just stay close, bro? Like, you're clearly in, in sound distance of me. I can call you and you come. Why are you always so far away? So, yeah. Well, you've never played The Witcher 3. The horse has got to go so the horse doesn't get hit by, you know, your AOEs. Yeah. Well, it's he's a wizard. So, (laughs) yeah. Uh, So at number two, I've got Eomir, dude. Um, he's a sneaky great character. Yeah. Um, I think for the uninitiated. Yeah, he's a cat. I believe he's he's a captain of of Rohan. He's the. uh, is that I don't. He's the nephew of the of the Theo- Theoden. Theoden. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what his title is. Um, I'm pretty sure I want to say like something equivalent to the captain of Rohan or captain of the horse Ro- horse rider guy. Yeah, I think uh, maybe, maybe that was it. And the well, he's the eventual 18th king of Rohan. Um, it was he was the marshal of the Mark. Not many kings. Not yeah. many kings in this entire you know story. Yeah. Well, so. there's like three, I think. Uh, well, he yeah. was 18. There was 18 at least. Oh, 18th of, of, of Rohan. Well, they yeah. probably live. It seems like they live long. But, They're you long, know. Long lives. Yeah. Or I think, I don't know what the history is. I think Rohan, I know Rohan, I'm pretty sure, broke off from Gondor at some point. Sure. So, sure, it makes sense. you know, if if each king is living to be like 80 years old and you're got, I mean, that's a couple hundred years, maybe seven. Yeah, that's, of, you know, it's not, yeah. not a whole long time. Well, did you see their capital? It was like not uh, not strong, <laughs> not a strong capital. They're like it, like they weren't even living in their strongest place. <laughs> they were just living in like a random hill. <laughs> They're like, should we make our capital Helms Deep this dope place with all these walls no. and like all this stuff? No, nah, how about this place that is completely open on a, all sides? Let's go live in a field. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, strong choice though. I mean, he he, you know, brought a lot. Died, Not to mention died. Carl, Carl yeah. Urban, dude, is one. Yeah, of the, he did a great dude, job. Dude, uh, yeah, he is. Carl Urban is sneaky good in everything. Have you? Did you ever watch The Boys on Amazon? No, but I've heard it's good, and I didn't even realize. Like now that I like seen the picture of it, like yeah, that is him. I've heard The Boys dude, is good though. I've you're heard gonna I might love, get into it. You're gonna love it, dude. Yeah. Um, it's really good. We'll we'll talk about that because season two is coming up in September fourth, I believe. Okay, uh, you know, so I'm not that far behind. You know how I like to be caught up on things. Yeah, it's it's and it's one of those things that's worth catching up on. Uh, so why don't you tell us? Uh, I mean, we all, everyone, if you've listened before, you know is number one. So let's hear it. Yeah, it's my my boy Legless, dude. I freaking love him, man. And like as much, obviously, I've told you guys my two favorite scenes that come from Two Towers and Return of the King. I, is it crazy that I get to talk about some of the dopest scenes ever in the upcoming series that we're going to talk about? You know, yeah. The Hobbit, he kills it in that too when he was just a young man. You know what I'm saying? He was a young 600. I Orlando Bloom killed it. I you know, I'm a big Orlando Bloom fan as is. I mean, just like the whole like elf thing is dope. Yeah. You know, I I you know, I just freaking he just did a such a good job and like while being complete royalty he was just his own dude he didn't you know he didn't like ah oh, he didn't look down on people because he wasn't a king or whatever he was always sticking up for aragorn too you know he was this is the king this is the king of uh of of gondor the know. lost king is returned <laughs> the lost king is returned you know he's just always sticking up for his boys you know what i'm saying and and the and the relationship that he had with your favorite character that you'll talk about, it was just so much fun throughout the entire series where they, I say it in air quotes, hated each other, but they really didn't. They really loved each other yeah. and would have done anything for one another. Yeah. So Legolas, I'll get to talk about him yeah. all next series. So I'm going to let and you talk about your number one. Gimli, dude. Going so well with Legolas. At the end of the series, you know, uh, how about side by side with a friend? I I yeah. could do that. Right. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's a meme to this day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but my favorite scene of, of all Gimli is let them come. There is but one dwarf yet in Moria who still draws breath. The whole, I mean, Moria 
is probably my favorite scene of the entire series. Yeah, well, I mean, just super good. Everything from the you know just from them, uh, fi- I guess fighting the kraken if that's what it is. What uh, the uh, uh, the the monster before they? I would uh, guess it would be kraken ish. Yeah, oh, just a yeah, big octopus. You know, that's a great scene, but he picks a terrible position to battle, like just right in the middle of everything with no, no like. So you know, I think like, no for us that would be, but I think for someone of his stature, he swing. he's swinging at head level. Sure, and he you know sure. he's got a low center of gravity. It was more just because he didn't have any thing to his back yeah you well know. i mean he, if he got in the back that means the hobbits are in front of him right he's there because he's there there he's protection. protecting yeah, yeah. He, he's a tank that t- if you're a tank and you get in the back you're doing your job wrong yeah healers in the back tanks up front dps Absolutely. to the left and right um which you know if anything legolas had the bad stance because he's like right in front of him well, firing he's, arrows he's right but like, he, get out of the way know, of the tank man you know, he shoots you know i mean yeah. he kills it with the arrow yeah oh Look, yeah man they were trying to bust up in that thing and yeah. he was already taking him out. Okay. Yeah. So let, let's not get into a large argument over who is yeah. better legless or Gimli. Fairness, Gimli did put them in that position by running in there. If they, they were just going to sure. bypass that room. Sure. But no, I mean, uh, Gimli's such a strong character, dude. And I mean, he, he, he's also brings the comedic value to the, the series that the series really needs. My fa- one, uh, one of the best scenes in the movie is, uh, I believe it's the two towers. One of the first few scenes when they're running, <laughs> and uh legolas yeah. and aragorn are all good to go and he's like come on let's go like like let's hurry like he's like what, what? he's just he kept up pretty good though, yeah be honest with well, you i can't remember the exact quote it was like uh we, we're, we're strong in short distances yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, or if we're talking gimli i guess we are uh, when he's talking about uh, dwarf women, he's like, the thing is, you may never know if you've seen a dwarf woman because we look so <laughs> yeah. similar to dwarf yeah. men. <laughs> uh, uh, but all right. So that wraps up our uh, officially wraps up our Lord of the Rings discussion next week. We will have watched uh, hopefully uh, I guess I'll have to watch it tomorrow because uh, I don't think my wife's going to want to want me to watch it on our vacation. We'll watch um, the un- unexpected journey. Which I'm actually no, I already watched it. That's right. Yeah, I already watched it as well. Yeah, so. I already watched it. Uh, it's a great movie. But we'll we'll get into that. Um, so let's move into what are you binging? Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the show you're watching and propane accessories? <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm watching uh, King of the Hill. Uh, no, I'm watching King of the Hill. I freaking love King of the Hill. I've seen it through like three or four times. I it's don't those, know you. Yeah, just so funny dude mike judge is such a creative writer that i i just love king of the hill like hank hill is one of the funniest dudes without knowing that he's the funniest dude ever yeah you know which and makes I mean, it that much more funny yeah i mean you know my one of my favorite parts of the show is how is how everybody understands Boomhauer, no problem but there's situations where Hank is like, you know, can't understand you, Boom. How are you? You know, you're yelling through this hole, like not because you can't understand yeah. him, but because he's like, oh, you're too far away or you're saying it. In- <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I've just been watching a lot of King of the Hill just to kind of throw on and just just watch. Man, it is the earlier seasons of that. It, there is a dramatic difference in the uh, animation. Yeah, value. I noticed that. Uh, I, I but watched it still a just as funny. You know, there is a few plot holes that you've seen a couple times through, like the episode in season two where Bobby becomes a great shooter and they're talking about him getting his first gun. But like in season one for his birthday, his grandfather got him a gun, you know, so like there's a little, few things like that. But I mean, again, it's an animated series yeah so uh what about you man i kind of looked yours up and it looks lame it's actually pretty decent it's a drama i watched it with the wife um it's called little fires everywhere it's a mini series on hulu uh based off a novel that uh, i believe got green lighted for a season two reese witherspoon and carrie washington it's a um you're not selling this very strongly dude eh, well I'm selling it the best I can, I guess. Yeah, I know. I man. mean, listen, it wasn't the best thing I watched. It wasn't the worst thing I watched. It wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't even say it's the at most average thing I've watched. It's it's decent. Yeah. Um, it, it passed the time. It, it was a little bit entertaining, but yeah, that's just what you know. With so much hockey on, I didn't have many choices. Like I, I always know. watch that, and I mean, I haven't what? watched much else. Um, there's a couple. There's another show that I haven't watched that we'll talk about next week that I actually do like, and I think you're like, but we'll talk about that next week. 
I haven't been drinking much beer this week. <sighs> Me either. I mean, I I, I went to, uh, and watched the ga- the Preds game, and so I, you know, I had some shots, some Jello shots, and whatnot. Uh, but again, man, you know, I mean, unless I wanted to bring Miller Light in here again, it was pretty much par. Yeah, I had a couple course, tailgates, dude. but yeah. So let's go ahead and talk about what's snapping our stick these days. Bobby and Brandon are about to find out exactly what snaps their sticks. Why don't you start us off this week, bud? Yeah, man. Um, so my sports answer is going to be athletes getting in, getting in Twitter wars with each other. I just... <laughs> Guys are grown men yeah. that are making millions of dollars, dude. It just bugs me. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, do you want to give us an example? Because I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head. I just can't think of any. Yeah, really. the, I know they're there. The the Damian. I mean, recently the Damian Lillard Paul George battle that that's oh, I don't going follow full, I don't follow NBA much. So it's mostly it. NBA that gets into it like this. But I mean, there's it, it's across all boards. But dude, it's just like, and I'll tell you who's the worst Twitterer ever. Freaking Kevin Durant, dude. He always be talking about something or another and having fake pro fake, yeah. fake Twitter accounts and talk. It just it just bugs me, dude. I cause I don't care, man. Like yeah. you want to say something at a press conference when somebody's asked you a question, no problem. But just like yeah. bringing it up like on your own and starting a fight, it's yeah. just because here's the thing, like I get boxers doing it. Like they are there to that's, sell a, they're there to sell something and that's a fight. Well, and it's like, they don't have like 80 some odd games to fight each other. Yeah. You know, like it's just like one fight. And so like, they want to get yeah. people intrigued. And I mean, uh, I don't find that. I don't find that to be the same no. as like athletes, like two basketball players getting into a Twitter yeah. war. You I know? mean, you heard it here. He thinks fighters are not athletes, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, yeah. don't tell our boy Manny, dude, because yeah. he will he will he will shrek me, dude. Yeah, but uh, no, I agree. And the crazy thing is, like, we've seen how popular it is for athletes to like kind of like get along and kind of joke around on Twitter. Obviously, I think players like LeBron take it too. Like, I don't want to see two guys from rival teams be buddy buddy all summer long. I think that's a little weird. I get training together sometimes, but like going on each other's vacation and going wine tasting all summer long before you like going like that just seems odd to me. Wait till you're retired. Yeah. Like Shaq and uh, Barkley did. Um, But yeah, no, I agree, man. It is weird to see. Uh, I'm on Twitter more. I guess I don't say I don't follow much NBA. Uh, Well, see, I'm not on Twitter and that's the problem is that I'm not on Twitter and I still have to see about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it'd be different if it was it was contained within the the world of Twitter, but it's becoming news and like it's not to me, you know. So what do you got for sports, man? I've got uh, people and I use the term people really loosely because they're they're dumbasses getting mad at pro athletes who decide to sit out for the for their season due to COVID. You know, the same people that bitch and like, oh, well, if you don't like it, maybe then you should sit out. And then a professional athlete says, OK, yeah, I'm going to sit out. And they're like, whoa, whoa, what do you mean? You bet you better play your sports ball for me, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and, it, and it's nine times out of ten. These people are not. Premier. Athletes. Well, no, they're not premier citizens oh, at yeah. all. You know, I mean, they're. And I, I'm not belittling anybody, but when you start talking about other people and the job they're doing and what they choose, you're exactly the yeah. opposite of what you claim to be yeah. generally. So, yeah, and people man, act like, ridiculous. like and it's all, like they were saying, well, you're getting a paycheck. It's like, first off, if that's what the player association decided on, you're not paying them. Yeah. The, the money there. You're not having to pay. You're not their boss. I, You know, <laughs> and it's funny because nine times out of 10, the people that are getting mad are people that wouldn't go to a game. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They're just mad to be mad. So yeah, I can, I can see that, man. I can see that. Yeah. But it, but it is obnoxious, but, and this is, this one actually is not supposed to take a bit more only because of the repetitiveness, the freaking commercials and the Stanley cup dude have been horrendous dude. Yeah. And listen, I'm a Duncan guy. I'm a big Duncan over a Krispy Kreme guy, but that commercial is killing me. That's why pasta was unfit to play. Remember, he was making that commercial. <laughs> yeah, so, 
Yeah, I am. A, I'm usually a quick. Uh, I usually go out and maybe have a cigarette or like mute it, you know, because I've been nice to yeah. Stephanie. I've let her watch what she wants on the big TV and I've just watched games yeah. on my life because it's really unfair to ask Stephanie to watch, uh, you know, 30 hours of hockey a week. Yeah. Well, the good thing is Maggie's been catching up on her shows that I don't want to watch in the bedroom. I'm watching on the big screen. And, you know, a couple of times she'll be on the big screen and I'll be in the bedroom watching the games or she'll watch a game with me there here or there. But yeah, dude, it's just it's just hard to get through these commercials sometimes, man. And like there are other ones that are just so bad. So mine is kind of based on me uh, having to go out and pull weeds. Uh, you know, I talked about it at the beginning of the show. The resiliency of weeds, dude, like growing through concrete and stuff yeah. like just deep man like you're not going to be able to get this out like just where it's just like ridiculous man it is so and this is more of just a personal thing it like you know like i get it like they're plants or whatever but like it is absurd dude like i still have like a couple of uh of weeds that have grown through my uh my concrete patio that dude, I am quite sure that nobody in the earth, on earth will be able to pull those bad boys out, dude. They're just in there. They're like, sorry, bro, <laughs> you're done. Okay, I live here now. Yeah. So, uh, so you know, more of just a personal complaint. Uh, the the weed resi- I Feel like we're becoming like an outdoor show as of late. We got you failing as a farmer, me being upset at weeds, failing temporarily. Yeah, well, you're not doing it, so completely. You've completely failed. But I'm thinking about doing it. You're and thinking hey, about that's the failing. first step, buddy. You're thinking about failing. Let's close this out, bro. Uh, we will see you guys next week. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Pox Out Podcast. To see what other ridiculousness the guys are up to, check them out on Twitter and Instagram at Pox Out Pod. 